Welcome to the 5 on 4 podcast on adioroyster.com. I am Adio Royster. What is 5 on 4, you might ask? Well, five-minute podcast about the four teams in the NFC East. Rolling them out today, tomorrow, Wednesday, and Thursday. Gearing up for the Eagles season opener this Sunday against the Cleveland Browns. But hey, we're playing against the NFC East. I thought it would be fun to call up a couple of people who are fans of other teams in the division, kind of gauge where they're at with their teams, and just do a little rap, a little Q&A session, find out how they feel about their team, and have a little fun as well. The song you're hearing in the background, it's Hail to the Redskins. It's the first of the 514 series. Doing the Washington Redskins first, and I got a guy on the line with me. He loves the Washington Redskins. He talks incessantly about the Washington Redskins. We used to work together in the same building, but he's off doing his thing over at Double X 1090 here in San Diego, California. The San Diego sports leader, the producer from the Josh and Sherrod show, Mr. Carl Armstrong. How you doing, sir? I'm doing fantastic. I'm telling you, man, I feel like I want to bet or something like that. An Eagle fan playing Red Skid music? Wow. How you doing, man? I had to pull that out because I feel you're you're special. You're a Redskins fan. So okay. you've been you've been getting beat on by the other three teams in the division for at least the last ten years. It's the least I can do to play your fight song before I interview you. Hang on, I want to correct you real quick. We swept the Giants, the Super Bowl champion Giants last year. Okay, I got to hang my head a little bit, or hold my head a little bit higher, knowing that fact. Okay, remember that, buddy. With the second pick in the 2012 NFL Draft, the Washington Redskins select Robert Griffin III, quarterback Bill. You realize I was already crying and everything on the floor, praying and all that stuff. <laughs> <laughs> There hasn't been this much buzz about the quarterback position in Washington since Mark Rippon. Uh, wow. Even then, I'd say there was a lot of skepticism about Mark Rippon when he was kind of getting into his prime for the most part, you know, coming off the, the success of Doug Williams. He was supposed to take over the reins. It took him a while to come to his own, but he uh, finally did. But, yeah, I'll tell you what, the buzz with Robert Griffith, I mean, we've had very little to cheer for in the running back or the quarterback position for the last Gosh, t- uh, 20 years or so. We've had, you know, uh, Brad Johnson who had one decent year. Uh, Mark, uh, I'm trying to say Mark Brunell had one good year in 2004. So Jeff George had one good game a couple years ago. <laughs> oh, yeah, a lot of quarterbacks have had, like, one good game with us. Kerry Conklin, look it up, 1983 against your Eagles. Through no, don't, no. Game. See, I yeah. knew you were going to bring that up, you bastard. After the kind of season that Cam Newton had last year, is there any kind of pressure on him to have that kind of a season? Or are Washington fans and media, are they just like, okay, as long as you don't suck completely, we're happy? Yeah, I think yeah, uh, yeah, Cam Newton's season last year definitely raised the bar for rookie quarterbacks. And I think in a way it's kind of unfair because it was an anomaly. I mean, even Peyton Manning, yeah, he's put up a bunch of yards, but he struggled in this first season. It's very rare that a rookie quarterback comes in and just puts up those kind of numbers that Cam Newton did. But in this day and age here with NFL quarterbacks now where a lot of guys will come in his first season. I mean, Ben Roethlisberger, his first season uh, uh, at the helm at Pittsburgh, he led them to a 15-1 to record, albeit that was a Super Bowl-ready team and they just needed a quarterback that could manage it. And he did a great job. But, yeah, the stakes are higher with these younger rookies. I mean, I, I believe there's a stat out there of something like almost 40% of the quarterbacks uh, in the league now or have a year or less experience. So they want to put you in there immediately, and they want you to start putting up decent numbers and start having a lot of success. No longer are we going to see quarterbacks putting up seasons like Vinny Testaverde back in the 80s. <laughs> you do like 13 touchdowns, like 30-plus picks. We will never see anything like that ever again. Am I, am I missing something when I say that there's a kind of a lack in talent at the skill positions? Uh, you know what? I a lack of it. You know, it's it's kind of like it, it's it's to be determined. Yes, of course, it's Mike Shanahan, and quite frankly, it, when it comes to his systems, you can put in the groundskeeper and stuff like that. As long as you've got an all decent offensive line that knows how to zone block, throw in the groundskeeper and watch this guy run for 115 yards per game. But uh, I mean, I, it, the news is changing every week in terms of who's going to be the starting running back. Either it was going to be Roy Hallou or Evan Royster, but they had injury problems all of a sudden. Alfred Morris, his undrafted kid out of Florida, Atlantic, comes in, has himself a great preseason, 
and because he's healthy, he could be the starter in week one. You don't know from that standpoint. The wide receiver standpoint, it is a mixed bag of talent. Santana Moss is not the receiver he used to uh, used to be. He's going to be relegated to the slot. You now have Pierre Garcon, who apparently him and Robert are having great chemistry with, and then Leonard Hankerson, the kid that they drafted a couple of years ago, he's supposed to emerge as the number two, and then they've got you know, a plethora of other receivers. One thing that is very talented, your defense, uh, the Redskins' defense, is actually pretty decent, I think. Yeah, I, I want to say they had like some 44 or 48 some odd sacks last year, and I'll tell you what, I'd have to go back to their Super Bowl season to see them putting up those kind of sack numbers, but... Uh, yeah, I mean, I, they know how to get after the ball here. Brian Arakpo here is starting to get closer to his prime right now. Uh, I'll I tell you what, um, their first-round draft pick, Brian Kerrigan, had a fantastic working, uh, rookie season. His work ethic has definitely um, uh, translated and has definitely affected the players around him. He's looking great. London Fletcher, I'm sorry, the fact that this guy here at his position has been able to play every game throughout his, throughout his entire year, not miss a snap or anything, not miss a game. It's absolutely amazing. And the fact this guy doesn't get more pub is, is ridiculous. Their defensive line, I know, is definitely going to be a little bit better uh, than it was in the past. Uh, the secondary, i got to tell you, I'm, I'm still a little bit skeptical about that, of course. Yes, you got D'Angelo Hall uh, coming off a couple of, uh, a couple of good, good seasons. Uh, I'm still not a fan of Reed Dowdy, to tell you the truth. I'm not sure exactly <laughs> who's going to be another cornerback right now. I know they got Brandon Merriweather that you were high, uh, high on, of course. I love Brandon Chicago. Merriweather. Played Chicago last year, did not put up the same interception numbers that he did in New England, but you know we'll, we'll see from a secondary standpoint. When you have a defensive or you have a front seven that can get to the quarterback and you know force the quarterback to get rid of the ball when he doesn't want to, that, that you know, iffy secondary looks a lot better. I usually say worse of luck to my my rivals in this division, but I, I'm hopeful for the Redskins. I really want them. I really want them to pull themselves out of the basement, so so that the Giants can nestle comfortably in there. Thanks so much for giving me a few minutes here to uh, rant about my skins. Absolutely. Uh, looking forward to looking forward to seeing RG three at the uh, at Lincoln Financial. Yes, exactly. We will see you. Was it um... December twenty third? So uh, right before Christmas. Right before Christmas, period. All right, well, we got a few gifts for you. Yes. <laughs> All right, Carl. Thanks for having me on. Once again, thank you, Carl Armstrong, devoted Redskins fan. Despite the last 10, 15 years or so, he's got RG3 to look forward to, and uh, I'm actually happy for him, so we'll see what happens. One team I'm not happy for at all, and I want to see fail as much as possible. They will be the subject of conversation tomorrow. Dallas Cowboys, you're up. Until then, everybody enjoy your Labor Day. Be safe out there. If you're going to the beach, beach safely. I'm out here in San Diego, California, so I'm going to take in some rays and uh, DLRoyster.com. Stay tuned for more from the 5 on 4 podcast, getting you ready for the NFL season, previewing the NFC East all week. Take care.